Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shed. I am Lonnie. Candace is under the weather today. She's probably not going to be here at all today. Um, maybe this afternoon she'll pop in. I'm not sure. But uh, very rare occurrence for me to work by myself now since she's been in here. Candace has been working with me for, uh, I think it'll be three years and November or December will make three years. Now before that, I worked by myself for about four years. So I'm very used to working by myself, but it has been a while. So I get a taste of working by myself today. I don't like it already, it's too quiet. Nobody to talk to, except for you guys. Um, I do have clothes, clothes in this bin that we, we picked up from storage uh, the other day that I'm gonna try and force myself to work through, although it's gonna be hard by myself. I might try and find something else instead. But uh, before I get into that stuff, I do have some orders to pull. So, which is also not that much fun to do by myself because I have to actually look at the screen, figure it out, do it all by myself, and there's no one else talking. But first, first order is this Sergio Mendez and Brazil, Brazil, greatest hits. I've never even heard of these people before, but we sold this uh, reel for $15 plus shipping on top. Let's see what's next. Uh, vintage Barbie clothing lot on 8 Charlie. Candace just listed this yesterday. And I think this is it right here. She listed this yesterday and it sold almost immediately. So she has been killing this uh, vintage Barbie or vintage doll thing. And we actually, I'm kind of excited. We, we have some more of that kind of stuff coming in. Uh, we bought, Candace bought a big lot of it on Facebook Marketplace and had it shipped. So we're, we should be getting that either today or tomorrow. We'll be able to share it. Um, I think she made a killing on this buy though, but that'll have to, I'm not even supposed to tell y'all, <laughs> but she's not here to tell me not to. On one Charlie, I listed these yesterday. These are some Shaquille O'Neal uh, starting lineup, like members only figs. And they come with a court and a backboard for Shaq to dunk on. They are all, uh, they're all new, new condition. They, they're all like in their baggies and stuff inside of those boxes, never been assembled or anything. Uh, somebody bought all three of those for $19.99 a piece plus shipping on top. So that was pretty awesome. We have more vintage doll stuff. Five Charlie left. This was, Okay, it's this case right here. This is something that Candace ran at auction. This Ken doll case, and then this, uh, I guess a fodder, a bunch of uh, Ken doll fodder stuff in here. Sold at auction for $26 plus ship. Okay, one Foxtrot. We sold a little football. Hopefully I can find it. Okay, I dug it out of there. I had to, it was behind a bunch of other stuff. Man, if I had unlimited space, I would never store anything on bottom shelves. They would just be empty. Maybe they would have some boxes on them or something uh to store but i would not store inventory down there I had to get down on the floor um the older you get the harder getting down on the floor and then well getting down on the floor and back getting back up it kind of sucks but uh yeah we sold this little super bowl souvenir football thing for eight dollars plus shipping no 8.99 plus shipping on top Right on five Delta, we sold a uh, pie plate. And maybe I have a bad idea of how big this pie plate thing should be. 
but I feel like I should have seen it. Oh, I see it now. Okay, good. Here we go. This is a lemon meringue pie plate. It's got the whole, um, got all the baking directions on it and everything. A recipe, that's the word I'm looking for. That sold for $19.99 plus shipping on top. Then we sold some dog clothing. Dog N4. So it's going to be in this one. Uh, I'm going to put y'all down for a minute. All right, got it down and opened up. And looking for this one right here, Dog N4, which is pineapples. And it is supposed to be size medium, which it is. This sold for $16.19 plus ship. Let me put this box back up. All right, Smalls drawer right here. We sold this little rock band dongle. Got this at a, uh, this is actually like a, a preview of an estate sale. Picked this up for, I believe it was $4. Sold it for $35.99 plus ship. And then the last thing, actually I just got this out of the truck because it didn't even go there yet. Uh, it's a Mad Hatter. And listed this the other day. This is uh, normally a much, much more expensive nutcracker although i am overjoyed to get what we got we got 90 dollars plus shipping on top he's missing one of his hands that actually has the teapot in it he has the teacup but he's missing the hand with the teapot and candace candace actually emailed steinbeck just on the off chance they would potentially sell us the teapot and they never replied so um i mean i guess what what candace did say is that someone could just like buy a um buy just a generic hand and put that on there without the teapot but then maybe somebody could find a teapot and glue that to the hand too so i don't know but anyway we sold this for 90 dollars plus shipping on top so that is everything that i have going out today Okay, I went through the comments and I found what I think are five uh, five pretty good questions. Fairly quick, we'll see. I'm unsupervised because Candace isn't here. So let's see how long-winded these get. I'm Okay, it's noon now on Saturday. It's noon on Saturday. Let me see. I'm going to guess I can get through these by 12.20. So let's let's find out. I don't know. That's my goal is 20 minutes. But let's see if we can do this. All right, first one. Gold tops rock. We, we actually did a question from them a week or two ago, I think. Lonnie, now that Candace has obviously become the star of your channel, how are you coping with your feelings of insecurity and lowered self-esteem? <laughs> And do you mind sharing your therapist contact information? So here, here's, I think you might have that backwards, okay? Like in any marriage, one person married up and the other one kind of had to settle a little bit. It's not, I, I make that probably sound a little more negative than it is, but in our marriage, uh, I definitely feel like I married up and I feel like that's a win because the on the other side of that would be what if I felt like like Candace is the lucky one I wouldn't I prefer to be I prefer to feel like I was the lucky one <laughs> in our marriage hopefully Candace hopefully Candace feels somewhat fortunate herself but I think deep down she probably feels like she settled just a tad and I feel like I did not if I'm honest. So really that I think that question as far as um I feel great about that by the way. So really I think if anyone would have like uh a need of a therapist in this situation it would be Candace. So maybe we'll maybe we'll ask Candace this question because um I'm I'm fine with it. I am totally fine with our, our situation. <laughs> I'm fine with Candace being the star or whatever, if, if she is. Um, no, no problem at all. I, as a matter, I appreciate her help. I appreciate her um, 
being willing to come on camera and do these videos with me every day. So, uh, yeah, it's not, not a self-esteem issue for me. Might be for her, though. We'll have to ask her that later. Next one. That was a fast one. It's only 12.02. Next one. Side Hustle Sam. Do you immediately block buyers who make lowball offers on your merchandise? If so, why do you block them? Do you think they are out to cause your store harm? Uh, no, I don't make, I don't immediately block buyers who make lowball offers, usually on like a really, like just a silly offer. Um, I'll do one of two things. I'll either just like decline it or sometimes I'll ignore it. Although I don't like to ignore it because I don't know, I don't know anything about like, I have no inside information about the eBay algorithm. However, I do think that it makes sense to me that um, all these platforms would would reward, I'm just guessing here, um, would reward people that are responsive to messages, offers, things like that. So that, that that's my thinking. I, but no, there's no reason to block. The only way I would block somebody in that kind of situation is if they continue to make uh, like low, like stupid low offers uh, over and over on different items. And it, you know, I started, if I started to feel harassed or if they were just screwing with me, at that point I would go ahead and block them. But that doesn't happen that often for that situation. Um, I think that's just the cost of doing best offer. And really, we get a lot of offers that we don't take but a lot of times the offers we don't take, even though I think they're low, they're still like reasonable offers. You know, like I can understand why they would make that offer. So I, I don't normally uh, get offended by lowball offers though. I just look at them like really binary. Like, do I want to accept the offer or not? And then if the offer is somewhat reasonable, do I want to work with this person? Or if it's just like really a, just a silly offer, um, I find like the really, really low offers, I usually can like, it's so rare that we're going to make a deal that I don't like putting any time into it. So it kind of depends on how low the offer is. All right. Um, 12.05 now. Robert Sen 1080. And this is one, this is a question I've gotten a pretty good bit over the years since I've had um, this Eco Pro 2 machine right here. Long time viewer here. How much would you charge to ship around 10, di 10 discs to you to resurface and ship back to me? And I actually thought about doing that as kind of like a side hustle whenever I bought that machine because when I bought it, Ah, man, what was it? I think it was, it was around $1,300 when I bought this Eco Pro 2. And it was a lot of money, I thought. But then now, they cost even more. They're like over $1,600. So, being that it costs that much, I was like, man, I need, need to get my money back out of this thing. You know, like, can I use this to make money? But then the more I thought about it, the more... I just saw all these problems. Like, first of all, how much would someone be willing to pay for you to resurface a disc? Like if they sent you 10 discs. I'm thinking they probably wouldn't be willing to pay more than about 30 bucks, okay? That's what I'm guessing. Now, the next thing I thought was they're probably not going to send you discs to resurface. And I'm not talking about uh, you, Robert, in, in particular. I'm just talking about general thoughts. They're probably not going to send you discs to resurface unless they're higher value discs, right? So I kind of feel like if something gets screwed up, because resurfacing disc is it's pretty easy and it just about always works. Sometimes you have something go wrong. Or, or sometimes um, you can resurface a disc and then it just doesn't work afterwards. Or sometimes 
you you get a disc to i could see this happening a lot you get a disc to resurface super scratched and like there's a little crack right 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 by the ring there's a little little hairline crack and once you put it in here that crack gets worse and goes up into the data part you know and maybe the person that sent you the disc didn't even notice that little that little crack um there's stuff that can go wrong there they could also but people could also lie about what they sent to you right like they could claim they sent you uh these discs but then you say, no, 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 you didn't send me those discs. You sent me these, see? And then they call you a liar. What do you do then? Um, also, let's say uh, do 10 discs that are worth, and let's say the 10 discs have a retail value on eBay of around $200, right? They send the discs to me. I resurface them. I send them back. Let's say they don't receive them. Now what? I just think of all of these issues for the money. I don't think it's worth it for, for us, for me. Um, I have like pretty much the only people I want to resurface discs for are for people that I already know and trust, uh, i.e. friends. I have done that before. Like we've gone on trips before. Uh, picking trips and I've actually just brought the machine with me and said, yeah, here, you can use it much as you like. Here's how it works and let them do it. That's the that's the way I prefer to do it if I'm going to do it at all. But no, as far as like uh, using that machine to like do bulk discs for somebody, I am just not interested. I see the the amount of money that I can make off of that is pretty low and the amount of liability I would have if I did that is really high. That's the way I look at it and I just don't want to do it. Also, this machine is awesome for like a small little resale thing like we're doing. I don't think it would be great to do like a lot of bulk for someone else. I think a next higher level machine up would probably be more suitable for that. One of them that's automatic where you could just load a stack of disc in and then hit go and walk away and they're done. Like this one is really easy and really good, but it's not quite, it's not quite commercial level, I would say. That, that, that's what I would say about that. So no, I, um, I mean, I, I really don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Okay, 1210, this is going very, very fast. I might want to slow it down a little bit. Um, this is from Gem Drops. Do you notice any feedback in using the purchase paper versus using newspapers to use as purchases? Okay, so I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that before I read the rest. Um, I do not notice any difference between newspaper and purchase paper because I, I haven't used newspaper in over five years and the reason i don't like to use newspaper is i don't like how whenever you handle newspaper and touch it it makes your hands dirty i don't like that <laughs> so i choose not to use it now if if i got a package that was packed padded or void filled with newspaper it wouldn't bother me um the only thing i would say about newspaper newspaper is really thin it's uh Newspaper is not quite as thick or not near as thick as this stuff here and uh, Newspaper when it flattens out Like when it gets compressed, it's much more likely not to have as much spring back if, if that makes sense and I, I, I think the I think the void fill or cushioning capability of newspaper degrades uh, really quickly, especially if it's old used newspaper that's already been crumpled before. Does this make sense to y'all? This kind of paper here, um, I think does a much better job than newspaper. But if you're using newspaper, you got a bunch of free newspaper out there and you're using it, I don't I don't question that either. That's, that's fine. I'm just telling y'all what I choose to do. Now, if the newspaper is clearly dirty, yeah, no way. But you know, clean used newspaper, that's that's fine. I don't love it. 
Um, I don't like touching newspaper. I, maybe that's just a thing for me. I think newspaper's nasty with all that ink and stuff. Do you get any feedback in using these papers? I don't get feedback in particular for paper, but I get a ton of feedback for the way I pack. And it, I don't, I don't try and make it like some boutique experience when someone opens a package, but whenever someone opens one of the packages that comes from us, I do want them to, to think that, okay, I see where they took some care and they gave a damn about my purchase. Oh, and look, here's a card that says, thank you. And here's a sticker. That's nice. Whatever. I just want them I want the the packaging and the presentation to make a good first impression because I feel like if you pack like half, if you if you do kind of a shoddy job of packing, even if the item makes it there, somebody opens it and they're like, Ugh, you packed it like this, they're gonna really like put that thing under the microscope and be super, like if anything else went wrong, like, let's say the package took, through no fault of your own, 10 days to get there. And then you kind of, you kind of half-ass packed it, right? And then they get it late. They're already going to be like, huh, I got it late. Let me see what else can go wrong. They open it and it's like, just really like, just like bare minimum packing. They're going to be like, ugh. And then, then they're gonna like really pick that thing apart and look for anything to complain about. So I think that like if let's say the item is is running late, and then they get it, and then they see that you packaged it well and took care and wrote the little thank you thing or whatever, that might be able to disarm some situations too. So that that that's my thought. I do get a ton of feedback about packaging though. So I know that packaging is very important to customers. Um, I know I find it annoying when I get packages with the peanuts to get everywhere. Yeah, um, love, hate with packing peanuts. I don't choose to use them anymore typically. However, I do know that packing peanuts are excellent void fill and cushioning you know, protection. It doesn't get a whole lot better than packing peanuts. So, on one hand, I, I, I agree with you. Like when you open the box, take your item, pack the peanuts, go everywhere. However, that's tempered by the fact that that person actually used a great, great packaging to protect the item. And I, I choose to look at the second thing and, you know, I consider a few packing peanuts I have to pick up off the floor later. That's pretty trivial. That doesn't bother me. Um, do you get specific packaging requests? Sometimes, um, back when I used to be brave enough to sell turntables on eBay, I found the turntable buyers were very, very specific about how they wanted their stuff packaged. Um, some of them would even go so far as to put like step-by-step -step everything to do uh, for good reason, because I can definitely see most eBay sellers that don't specialize in shipping turntables um, doing a pretty bad job of it. I've done a bad job of it before and had them get damaged. So I have gotten like people that buy turntables are extremely picky about the way it's packed for good reason. Another one, uh, I've had typewriters before where I had a guy send me a video this is like a $150 typewriter I was shipping out. And he was very nice and he gave a bunch of uh, bunch of tips on how to pack it. And he even included a video, a YouTube video on packing a similar typewriter. And so at first I was a little put off by that. But then I was like, you know what? I'll just, this guy must have been hurt before on eBay. I'll just thank him for the tips and I'll actually just go through and watch the video. I'll pick up some ideas from it and I'll implement them on this pack. And I did that. And um, he got the typewriter, overjoyed, glowing feedback, messaged me, thanking me for packing it so well. So 
you know, I, it's it's real easy, and I've I've been the same way. It's real easy whenever someone offers specific packaging requests to get bent out of shape because I take pride in the way I pack, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do too, and girls. But you also have to remember that there's a lot of people on eBay. If you if you shopped on eBay a good bit, a lot of people on eBay that do not take pride in packing. And uh, a lot of the people, a lot of our customers that we have, uh, have been burned by those people before. So it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with some of their past experiences. That's the way I, I look at it now. But I still do get a little bit out of shape. All right, 12, eight, no, 12, 19, and we have one more question. So this is going pretty well. This is from Colleen Moriarty. 1309 do you think by having a store they give you first advantage or bump in algorithms and the reason i included this one is because uh similar to this wait there was another question oh where i was talking about offers and i i, I theorized that you know ebay likes to see you like responding to questions quickly and things like that that's just a total guess I'm pretty careful on this channel um, because I see a, I, I do see on other YouTube channels, and I'm not throwing shade at anyone in particular, but I see on a lot of other YouTube channels, people think that just because they have some amount of viewership and they're putting up videos and maybe they've been selling on eBay for a while, they think that that experience and the fact that they have some type of platform to speak from um, they think that they can uh, just make up theories about the eBay algorithm and then present them to their viewers as fact. And, you know, uh, most viewers, I think, are savvy enough to take things like that with a grain of salt. But some newer, newer sellers or people that are new to reselling might see this, this, this YouTube channel and see what they're putting forth as fact about the eBay algorithm, um, and just take it, take it like at face value. So whenever it comes to talking about the algorithm, I I am pretty careful to not not just make just make stuff up or guess or say you know in my experience the algorithm does this or that. Um, I know I've probably done that by mistake, but uh, yeah, I don't know anything about the eBay algorithm. I know nothing. Anything I would know about the eBay algorithm would be just based on our own personal experience, which uh, we, we do okay on eBay, but it's still a really small sample size. So anything I would tell you uh, would be worth about as much as something that you could come up with yourself. So I, as far as by having an eBay store, do they give you first advantage or bumping algorithms? Um, one thing I do know is that I think eBay would prefer that all sellers have a store because that's a little extra revenue for them, right? And it can also kind of lock you in to a kind of a long-term commitment with eBay. Because if you do the store and you pay and you do like the year-long contract, then uh, not only are you pay in the monthly, but they have like somewhat of a long-term um, guarantee that they're gonna get money. So I think eBay likes likes selling stores a lot. They like us paying for stores, it's easy money for them. Um, but the question is, do they like it so much that they give priority to those listings versus someone that doesn't have a store? And the the, the honest truth is, I don't know. Uh, I, it never occurred to me that that was a, th a thing, and um, I'm not going to guess about it here. I, I don't know. That's all I'll say. It would make sense if they did, but it would also make sense to me if they didn't but with eBay, who knows? Now, um, 
I will also say I've been seeing some videos and posts out there about um, eBay approaching some content creators and I keep wanting to say INAD, but they're offering them some type of access to eBay big wigs or extra information or maybe marketing material. I don't know because I haven't received anything like this in exchange for that co said content creator signing an NDA. And it sounds like basically kind of trying to control uh, creators to some extent. And I have not been offered anything like that. And uh, just want to put it out there. I would never sign anything like that either. I would not sign an NDA uh, limiting what we can or can't say about eBay. So uh, overall, I love eBay. Y'all know that. We've been selling there for years. I'm also very critical of a lot of things eBay does too, especially regarding like uh, my biggest beef with eBay would be promoted listings. But there's others too. So anyway, long, long answer short. Um, I don't know about the, the algorithm and I have not signed an NDA with eBay. Although if I had, I don't think I would be able to say whether I had or not. But so how do y'all know if I have or not? I guess you don't, do you? Just have to take me at my word, so. But yeah, that's five questions in 25 minutes. Not bad. Thanks a bunch for watching and we will see y'all again very soon. Hopefully Candace will be the star of the show. <laughs> will be in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye y'all.